Welcome again, this is Musashi, and we're, today we're going to be looking at the AMX-10P. It is a French AFV in the game. It is been around since the early 1970s. It's still in service today with uh, French forces as well as some export countries. This is still early access. Actually, we just finished the first week of early access, and it was fun making this video because I'm already having withdrawal symptoms. I can't play anymore, so looking at these videos is what I'm left with and probably what many of you are left with. So this is going to really focus on just a lot of the gameplay of the AMX-10P. But I should say something about the vehicle. It's shaped like a wedge of cheese. I guess that would be fromage in this case. The uh, front of the tank, uh, when, you, when I first got it, it comes from the um, LAV-150 and then you get into this thing. The very front of it's got this, looks to be glass on the front. It's all shiny. See that there on the very front? Well, that's what it is. It's the trim piece because this vehicle is fully amphibious. can go about 10 kilometers an hour, just like the PT-76 and the BMD-1. It's got two hydro jets that propel it, doing about 10 kilometers an hour in the water. So it's a pretty impressive vehicle that does need no preparation to get itself into the water. So if they ever do... Uh, implement the swimming feature. This will be one of our swimming tanks. On the very back of the vehicle, they've got a whole bunch of what well, look to be peanut butter jelly sandwiches or some kind of packages. I don't know what that is or why there's so many bags on the back. Maybe someone who knows these vehicles better than I can tell me if that's just decoration or that's where they stow the crew's gear. It's probably what it is uh, because this thing has a three-man crew. There's a driver in the front left, and then the little mini turret can hold two guys, the commander and the gunner, and then it can hold eight fully equipped infantrymen. And that's uh, not only impressive, uh, but it more importantly has a real impact on the game, as we will see when we look into the modules here. The MX-10P is made out of military aluminum. I've covered this in other vehicles about the difference between military aluminum and other aluminum, but it's still pretty much aluminum, so you're not going to stop a lot, of, uh, a lot of ammunition heading your way, or a lot of main gun rounds, certainly even some higher caliber machine gun rounds, this stuff is not going to stop it. So you're a typical AFV in the game, you're not intended to tank any damage. The AMX-10P is pretty mediocre in a lot of ways. The camo is meh, the view range is meh, gun depression is meh, but it's got a, a few really nice things that really help define uh, its fun in the game as well as its role when you're playing. The speed and the acceleration are quite good. You, It is good at circle strafing. Uh, the gun is far more than pew pew pew. It's a 20 millimeter, but uh, the sound of it is just lovely. It doesn't go pew pew pew, it goes chug chug chug. It's a very manly sounding gun. I, I might play this vehicle just to listen to the tank sounds. They're that good. And the gun is really what a lot, some people have complained about, that these sort of auto cannons are just tearing up the main bottle tanks, but because they can fire so fast and you can just throw these rounds down range with abandon. Of course, that's the fun point. Um, in my early gameplay videos, you'll see that I was throwing rounds down with abandon and tearing guys up. But that was really early on in early access. Uh, very quickly, people learned not to just stand there and take it. And it got much more difficult to put these rounds on targets as the week progressed. Unlike some of the other AFEs, the view range is meh. It's only okay. The camo rating is okay. It's okay in lots of things except for that uh, amazing chug 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 gun. And one of the primary things that the AMX 10P is going for it, and that just defines it, is right there. That troop compartment I'm showing in the modules on the screen. That troop compartment is one of the two bonuses that AFVs get. You either get a view range bonus or you get the ability to capture a base more quickly. In the game, the, uh, at least in the module list, there's not a lot of to do about that main job differentiation between the AFEs, but really that, that ability to get the bonus for spotting or for view range or base capture has a dramatic effect on how you should behave when you're playing these vehicles. If the other guy's got better view range to begin with, then he gets a bonus on his little recon package 
and you don't, you're at a pretty significant disadvantage. And so spending your time being a passive scout or passive spotter in a tank like the AMX 10P isn't probably your, your best role. Certainly if you're the only AFE out there or there's very few of you and the enemy team doesn't have anybody that can outview range you, yeah, you can go into active or uh, passive scouting. But the tank is really built to use that chug, chug, chug gun. Get in, work your way in, lay down some suppressive fire, work your way in close, and your primary mission really ought to be to capture their flag, or at least put cap pressure on them. And later as the game matures, people will learn which of these AFEs are suited for the capture the flag game and which aren't. And in fact, when you're on the cap, people may easily figure out they need to start prioritizing shooting you first or any tanks that have that capture bonus to it. Right, let's take a look at some game footage now. I'm going to show the first three games in a row that I played. I wasn't able to record the very beginning of the first match, but here it is. Boom! Already I'm got a tank down and the, this footage just started. I literally just started the game and I, I break this thing out and I'm like, that's amazing! And see, I'm typing on the screen. This tank's just amazing! I literally just got in the game, start throwing these rounds down range, guy's dead. It was like, wow, this is incredible! Right? When you when you start off with a vehicle and the very first thing almost that you do is kill a guy right off the bat, you, your impression of the vehicle is quite positive. You know, there are some ammunition upgrades and they help a little bit, but right out of the box, this thing with its auto cannon is, is very good. And the upgrades are very, very small little bonuses to damage and penetration, the different type of rounds. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm using the high explosive incendiary. That's primarily what I use because it can hurt the big, the big boys, like right here. Oh, I had to watch and watch out my friendly. Don't hit friendly fire. Ah! So see, you can just, just sit there and just plow into these guys with these rounds. It's pretty awesome. And now there's some heavy uh, main battle tank guys that are really complaining about getting sandblasted by some of these auto cannons, but. When you consider he was surrounded by five tanks, were I to be isolated, then the, the, the situation may not have proven as juicy. So, you know, you see videos sometimes where uh, the AMX 10P is just chewing through a main battle tank. Well, again, there's that's not going to happen much as the game progresses. This is my first game in the AMX 10P, so this was like the first or second day of early access. If you haven't played the MX 10P, you'll see people have already adapted and aren't just going to sit there and let you pummel them with your uh, 20 millimeter. But nevertheless, it was still a lot of fun and it could still be very effective in throwing down an amazing amount of rounds. And I was so in love with doing it. You see, I, I get to do it again here. Oh my god, I'm lit. I can see I'm lit, but I don't care. I'm going to get it. It was just so much fun. Your clip is 45. So you could just go and go and go and isn't this fun and boom, you're dead. Oh, wait, wait, no, I'm dead because I'm lit and just sitting there having fun shooting rounds downrange. That is a lot of fun to sort of clip somebody like that, but obviously that was my first game. You would not normally want to just sit there while you're lit. I, I guess I could have moved and shot. <laughs> I was just sort of in love with the whole chug 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 of the, the gun. Okay, so here's my second game. I didn't look up uh, or know much about the vehicle when I got it. I just, like anybody, I just got a new tank and off I went. But based on my first experience with it, I was like, let me find someone else to fire up with this thing. This is awesome. And so without realizing it, I sort of gravitated to what this thing is better at doing, which is not necessarily getting up close, but I'm not looking to snipe guys. I'm looking to, you know, hit them with this chug 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 and so that's what I do in the second game I'm thinking where can I go to get myself relatively close to the enemy so I can have some more of that fun and of course I'm going to a spot I really like on this map that depending on how aggressive the enemy is you can make pretty good use of uh, your AFV here especially since again I'm not a long-range spotter that's not my specialty so doesn't mean I can't spot, but typically I put the AMX 10P in a position that it can get lights in relative close proximity, but stay safe enough. It's got the speed and maneuverability to get out of some real, real tight corners. It's kind of tall. It's kind of a boxy piece of French cheese. So you have to be aware of that. Matter of fact, I, I wasn't really quite aware how tall and big this thing is because I'd been on this rock on, on one of some of the other vehicles, but you'll see here uh, in a minute I get tagged because I'm a little fatter than I was used to in an AFV. Oh, see what I mean? Oh, engine's down. It's looking bad. Another five seconds, I'm going to be dead. Ah, I backed up in time. 
So already I've realized I need to hug this rock a little closer than I had been with the uh, AMX 150. Or the uh, LAV 150, rather. I did see on my screen it was a T62 that shot me, so I knew he was right over there somewhere, so I'm trying to find him. Identified. Ah, there you are, now I see you, but see, I'm plenty scared of him at this point, right? Let me see, oh yeah, good depression's not that bad here. I'm not doing a lot to him, but it's a decent nuisance. Obviously, just keeping him lit is, is worth it, especially if you have Artie in the game. These kind of close proximity lights are just as valuable as spotting them from 300 meters away. Oh look, even more main battle tanks that want to sit there and let me do this all day long. This is awesome! Again, this was real early. Also, the matchmaking, people hadn't really gotten past Tier 4 at this point, so I wasn't facing much that was higher than the AMX 10P at this point either. But, you know, despite the fact people have adapted to uh, this, this auto cannon and people don't just sit there anymore like they do in my early days here, it still does, can do the same basic damage if you catch enemies unawares. Oh, almost got him. Almost got him. Not quite. Identify. Hostile tank. Now look, he's back for more. I'm lit. Apparently I'm not as scared as I was. The T-62 seems to have disappeared. I'm not really sure what happened to him. Oh, oh, oh. We got another guy who wants to get shot. It's getting a little hairier at this point. You can see there's a lot of enemy right here. There we go. Aim for that big old turret. Get him. Get him. Back up. Ooh, just missed it. I've gotten pretty good about judging when they're likely to fire and then backing up at the last second. Uh, this is early on and I've got very little of that bug where the turret wasn't actually looking at you. Later I got it a lot and so I'm sure it'll be fixed. Again, this is early access so there were some bugs with the the orientation of the turret wasn't really looking at you yet you'd still get shot by the guy. But the first couple days I didn't have that at all so I was able to reliably poke up and do this. Now remember, this is only my second game in this thing, so now this guy's come forward. I'm determined to get him. I'm gonna get him! I must get you! I was determined, uh, just like the first game. You, you can easily fall in love with emptying your clip instead of being tactical and backing up and doing things that will make you survive longer. But again, it was my second game and I was still having fun just firing the gun. And then you'll, that's a good example, so I, I didn't do much damage to that main battle tank in that case. He had his front facing toward me. So, you know, you, as an AFV, you're not supposed to just go toe to toe with these guys and there you could see that I, I couldn't. I did get better in the AMX 10P almost every game. I, my improvement was was uh, quite good each game and I think it's in large part because it is a, a good damage dealer and it I didn't even I did, the whole time I played it all these videos I had no idea I was supposed to be capping as sort of one of my goals because that was its bonus I didn't really see that or notice it that's why I sort of was em emphasizing that in the beginning you really should be thinking how can I get to their cap and utilize my special capping bonus speed but at this point all I did all I did for the, for the first 15 games I played on it was just try to lay rounds down as like a damage dealer. I, I barely played as an AFV and didn't really use many AFV skills. Uh, you know, that's something that can be debated, but I think I made better progress than the BMD-1. I love my BMD-1. It's my favorite tank in the game so far, but it's much more difficult to use it because you've got to actually play the uh, AFV role. Uh, and there's a lot of tools for you to do those things, which is what makes it fun and challenging, but at least the way it was in the early access. There were just weren't many rewards. Your, your progress was very slow reputation-wise, and in general it takes a lot more skill to play a straight AFV role than it does a damage dealer. 
So I look back at my gameplay now, the AMX 10P, and realize that my progression was probably... My impression of the progression was better than it maybe really was because I wasn't playing the vehicle to its full strengths. I was just trying to shoot people. And then at the end of the scoreboard, I was doing quite well. And that's really more a matter of the game being balanced so that the AFDs do what they're supposed to do and less of what I'm doing in these videos, which is just pull up, lay down clip, rinse and repeat. Which was a lot of fun in the beginning, but I've kind of advanced my gameplay at this point. I don't just do this. Not that it's not effective to do so, but again, people have learned that it's not as easy to do this to people anymore anyway. See, I got greedy there again. It's real easy to get greedy with this thing. You gotta, you really gotta train yourself not to, uh, that that you can you can reload halfway through a clip. It's okay. Come out, come out, wherever you are, even though I'm trying to spot you and I don't have very good spotting range and my camo's not that great, but I didn't know any of this at the time. I'm just sitting here doing what a lot of people do. A lot of just sitting here, basically. Oh, look, another victim. Fun, let's do some more of this. Yep, see, that gets real addictive real fast. I should have posted, you know, instead of games 1, 2, 3, I should have posted maybe game 20. And you'd see, later, people wouldn't just sit there and take it like they did here in the early days. I may look back at these videos longly of the AMX 10P when someone would just let you pound on them like this. The next game's about to come up here. And in the, the, the next game... I actually get to the player's cap. Again, I wasn't thinking or necessarily trying to get on the cap. Maybe I was, I don't remember, but I didn't have a sense that this vehicle's real uh, emphasis and power was built around its ability to cap the enemy, especially when there's two or three of you on the cap. But for now, I was just looking for someone else to shoot. So this entire game was, oh, this is, this is good. I'm, this cannon is so fun, I just want to find someone else to shoot! There wasn't really any advanced tactical or AFVing going on here. Now that I really uh, I really like AFEs, I think the most of the classes I've played so far, I actually haven't played any TDs yet, but of my experience, I'm really enjoying the complexity of playing an AFV. There's so many things that you can do and influence the game on, and I, I just really like that it's so multifaceted, and I think they've done a great job of that. We've, I don't think they've done a very good job of rewarding the AFE players or the type of players who like to sort of have lots of stuff going on at one time and having to fulfill several roles for your team. And so not many people were playing AFEs toward the end of the uh, early access. It's just because the nature of the, the game was currently set up so that damage was still king by a long shot. Tail was second on being... Uh, a, a reputation earner though is is capturing or or gaining cap points you'll see that on the next game here about I show the the math of what you get out of capping it but again for now I just want to do more of this ah little bugger he just barely got away Well, oh wow, that that's, the game is just beautiful, isn't it? Just a beautiful looking game. It's just gorgeous. And that's that. Obviously, I had a lot of fun. I want to show you, this is my second game with this almost, I think, still stock ammo, I think is what I had in the vehicle at the time. So, the thing is awesome at going jog, jog, jog and, and shooting things. You're about to see my stats for the game here. And this, this really shows you that you you just earn a lot of reputation for doing damage. I'm third in reputation uh, here, but my damage is like 1,400, and for for that game at that tier, that was pretty good. So that's where I made I made decent progress. Obviously, you you can do damage in AFVs. I'm not trying to say that AFVs must just be passive or even active scouts. But as the week progressed in early access, it got tougher and tougher to do that damage in an AFE because people got wise to the game. Here I want to show you, I've gotten cocky, right, about this whole damage thing. I'll show you what not to do. Let me let me cut forward to the not to do part on this map. Okay, so I've moved up here very aggressively. Main battle tanks don't scare me. 
Ouch! Oh, and I'm on fire! And I've got modules busted galore, and I can't move, and... I'm not feeling too, too smart right about now. And my glory days of blowing people up seem to be over. Yeah. That's what not to do. Now let's look at what to do. There's already someone on our team capping their base. It actually is an AMX-10P already. And at the time that this video started, you see, he was at 2 minutes and 36 seconds to go by the time that he was on there by himself. As soon as I got on there, it dropped to a minute and 9. So a little bit more than half of the time is chopped when I showed up. What's even more fun is then a third AMX 10P on my team arrives to get on the cap. So we can really see the dramatic decrease in the amount of time it takes to cap. Like World of Tanks, but I think it will be especially pronounced when the uh, AMX 10P and vehicles of an ilk with the bonus get involved on this. But the third, uh, third tank, or the third AMX 10P gets on, he arrives at the one minute mark, and then it immediately drops to 37 seconds left to go before they've outcapped or gotten capped. Now it's hard to get three guys capping, but you can really see the dramatic difference between one and two guys. You got two and a half to three minutes by yourself, and then you're suddenly down to one minute with two guys on there. And he hadn't been on that cap very long, so you're looking at about a minute and 15. I don't know what the total time is, but a minute to go is not long for especially some of these slower moving vehicles to get back if they've gotten themselves pretty deep in on the map. This is really instructive to see this. I wanted to show you that uh, I had a really good game, as you can see, but I had a good game because I sort by reputation gained. That's the main thing I care about, right? And I made so much reputation because I capped. So the capping is under the objectives. See, on the objectives, I got about 70-ish reputation for that cap. And I wasn't there for the entire cap. I was there for most of it. So the longer you're there on cap and the longer you're there even sometimes by yourself, you, know, you, you make those. Now, you do only get the cap points if you win. If you're on a cap and you don't win the game, it doesn't seem to give you any of the cap points because you didn't win. So it's a bit of an all or nothing thing to encourage you to not just get on and off of cap, but to actually cap to achieve the win. Well, I really enjoyed my time in the AMX 10P. I sort of gladly moved on to the BMD1. That's just my own personal preference, but I had a lot of fun in this, and I think you will too if you play it. And if you see any AFE in the game now in Armored Warfare, one of the main things you should be looking for is, is this tank receiving the bonus for capping or for view range? And adjust your game accordingly. Thanks again for watching Let's Play Armored Warfare. This is Musashi, and I'll see you next episode.